Father, we thank you to give you glory now. God, we pray as we endeavor to the Holy Spirit. God, we pray that you would give us that which is necessary to encourage and lift and invite, strengthen, and Lord God, most importantly, give them something that they can live off of naturally and spiritually all at the same time. I thank you. I give you praise. I honor you. I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephesians chapter number four, quickly. I just strongly believe if I could stand for somebody who did not die so that I could live, or be able to stand for the word of God. Ephesians quickly. My, my, my translation may read a tad bit differently from yours, but I pray that you all would absolutely, positively, unequivocally understand. Amen. Amen. I got to cut off this stuff because all these notifications are coming up. Okay, here we go. It says, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. When you get there, just say, I got it. I got it. And what it says, it says, so Jesus Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and the teachers, watch this, to equip his people for the work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Watch this. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love and each part does its work. I want to look at something quickly. I want to look at this uh, verse 15. If I could have hatch, I want to try, try to, to pull a thought from verse number 15 where it says Instead, it says, speaking the truth in love, yes, yes. we will grow to become, in every respect, the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Uh, for the last few weeks, man, the last few weeks, uh, I have been in a series of kind of teaching, preaching, preaching, teaching, however you want to kind of describe it. I've been, been in a series of teaching dealing with this whole concept and aspect, if you will, of toxic relationships. I've been dealing with toxic relationships. But week number one, uh, we, we dealt with the thought and or the subject toxic relationship and we began to deal with it from the standpoint, catch this, uh, from us as individuals being able to identify toxicity. Identifying the toxicity in us and or being able to identify the toxicity in someone else. Uh -huh. I begin to share with you all emphatically that all of us at some level have toxicity in us. Uh -huh. That all of us are toxic individuals. The problem is, is that we as individuals need to recognize it and once we recognize that level of toxicity that at that particular point in time we need to address it because I don't have to remain toxic as quiet as Presbyterian Church, but that I can change aspects of my life if I'm willing to change them. So we started off with that, that, that thought. And then the next week we left that thought and we dealt with once we identified that toxic individual, how to deal with it, how to deal with them, or how to even deal with them if, if the toxic person is on our job. How to deal with them in love, not to snap off, not to trip out, not to blow up, I can't get no help. But, but understanding how to deal with that toxic person 
in love. Because yeah. sometimes the toxic individual you can't get away from because you're sleeping right next to him. Listen. Uh-oh. Okay, y'all quiet. I'm gonna stay here. And, and then, then the next week, the next week we, we, we moved on and we dealt with the whole concept and aspect of conversation talk. How many times the toxic person that we need to address isn't our enemies, but it's the enemy. That the toxic conversations that we have with ourselves, our thoughts, are the things that hinder us from being and becoming everything that God has created us, has called us to be as individuals. So the struggle is not the folks that we consider to be haters in our lives. That's good, Bishop. But the struggle is the hater that we sit with day to day. And that hater is our own personal concepts and ideologies of who we are as individuals. I wish I could get some help in here. So, so I wanted to conclude this because I want to go a little bit deeper today. I want to go a little bit deeper. And, and, and if I could, I, I looked at that particular passage of Scripture in verse number 15. It says, instead of speaking the truth in love, that we grow, watch this, that we grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. So, so for a few moments, for the, for the fourth installment and the final installment, I think, matter of fact, I'm almost sure, uh, I'm 80% sure, but we don't know. Help him, Lord, help him. But, but I, I just I want to talk to you all from this particular thought. I want to talk about effective communication. Okay. I just, just touch somebody and say, you need to learn, learn. how to communicate effectively. Okay, some of y'all are still looking at me. I say, touch your neighbor, touch him, touch him, and smile. And tell him, say, neighbor, you need to learn how to communicate effectively. There's a lot of things that I've learned in life, beloved brothers and sisters. A lot of things that I've learned in life. A lot of things I've learned in life. But one of the things that I've learned in life is I've learned that words play a key role in every aspect of life. Let me say that one more time. I've learned a lot of things in life, family. But one of the main things that I've learned is I've learned that words, that words without question, that they play a key role in every aspect of life. But I've also learned, beloved brothers and sisters, that one of the key roles that words play an effective role in is in conflict. Mm. I, was I want you to understand that words, they play a key role in every aspect of life, but the, one of the main places that we find that words play an effective role in is they play an effective role in conflict. Because the reality is, is that when they're used properly, when words are used properly, words promote understanding. When they're used properly, they encourage, if you will, an agreement, if you will. They, they think about encouragement. They bring about agreement. But when misused, beloved brothers and sisters, they usually aggravate offenses, and they drive people further and further apart. With God's help for a little while today, though, I want, I, if, if I can, I want to deal with this whole concept. I want to talk about this with the help of God. It's important that we understand that in this moment and season in our lives, as we, as individuals, begin to mature in the knowledge of who God is, and as we begin to grow as a church, it is imperatively important, beloved brothers and sisters, that we improve, if you will, our abilities to communicate. Right. It's imperatively important that we improve our abilities to communicate, and not only just to talk to one another, but to communicate the truth and communicate it in the spirit of love, as it declares in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 15. So for a few moments today, I want us to look at what the Bible says about three basic communication skills, and then, if you will, explore practical ways to use them, especially in the midst of conflict. Because what I've learned, beloved brothers and sisters, is that in the church, that the reason why people leave the church isn't because they're mad at the pastor. Oh, Bishop. I can't get no help here. The reason why they leave the church isn't because they are upset with the pastor. It isn't because the pastor is here, there, everywhere. It's not because of that. But usually the reason why things happen in the pews is because of conflict with one another. And the Bible makes it emphatically clear. It gives us specific ways on how we as individual believers need to learn how to deal with conflict situations. Because many times the reason why we fall apart and we say that we church hurt, and the truth of the matter is, is that the church didn't hurt you, an individual did. That's right, that's right. I was crying by myself. 
never hurt you. Church didn't do nothing for you. The church didn't do anything to, to create conflict in your life. The church did not hurt you. It was an individual that you trusted, that you thought had your best interests at heart. But the truth of the matter is, is that they were just a wolf in sheep's clothing. 